Okay, we're back now. Okay, we're back now from our break. We're gonna finish doing our rough schedule here. We have subtask three in here and our milestones and these are C's so we can have unique names. Okay, so I have our subtask three and our detailed task C's and our milestone. I'm double checking, I have my subtask A's and I have, and I have my save on. In 10 minutes. Yay. <laughs> and then I have my subtask one. And then you'll notice I put C's here instead of B's, but they're unique. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so when I open them up, I have my subtask and my milestone, my subtask and my milestone, my subtask and my milestone. This ties all of the little kids together. And then at the very end of the schedule, I put project complete. And that's A. It should be on the same level as the others, right? Mm -hmm. like, a, like a subtask on the same level as the... But it's a milestone, should, so it oh, should zero, be zero. zero. Yeah. And then I'm going to push this out because I want it on the same level mm -hmm. as the subtask. Sub so when I close my tasks up, my milestones should be tucked underneath them. Mm -hmm. So you can see as a roll up where we're be gonna be done on each of the subtasks. And you notice I didn't look at my start and finish dates. I noticed that. Okay, you notice they all start on 6-6. Six, six. Mm -hmm. And they all finish on 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, which, okay. which isn't real. So how are you gonna make that? That's where our successors and predecessors come in. But I'm really having a hard time with this because I don't have my views that I'm comfortable with. Oh. So I'm gonna open up my other schedule that has those views in it. And it was my XYZ company template. And I'm gonna pull those views over to my global using my organizer. And then I can go on and understand a little bit better from using my personal views of what's going on. So I wanna go to file and I wanna go to organizer and I'll show you how easy this is. I want my Gantt view and I wanna copy it over to my global MPT, and I'm in the company XYZ project. So that's over there. Well, I know because of my experience that there's a table that goes with a view. So I have to copy that over too. And it's the O3, I always name my tables the same. And that's something we'll cover in the advanced class because there's too much to cover that <laughs> in this class. So I have my Gantt view. I will also want to take over this enterprise view. So I pulled over the O3 and I need my enterprise view on my table. Make sure I have an enterprise, yes. Okay, so now Two more views I want to pull over is 10, my baseline versus my actual, because I'm going to show you how you can then status and monitor your schedule using these reports that we have put together in our company. Okay. So I have the one, and then I have 10, the week. Uh, the key summary level pass, and then the critical path. And then I also have to pull the tables for those. And I pulled over the one. I need to pull over the 13 and the 15. And if I'm going too fast. And these are all your peculiar views. Because yeah. I mean, there's no way I can know that. Yes. Yeah, I mean, so yes, there's stuff. no way you can know that because there's, there's they're little tool tips that I take with me and <laughs> take them out when I need them, which is now. Then I don't struggle through mm -hmm. the project. So I can close my XYZ template and then we are back at my XYZ schedule mm -hmm. that you're familiar with. And I can put my view in that I love, it's the 03. It has my predecessors and successors. Nice. 
And I can go from here. I can tell my baseline's not baselined yet. So there's a lot in this view I can tell. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go on and get these dates so they're correct. Okay. So everything needs a predecessor. Well, I don't have a project start date in here and it's good practice to put one in so you can actually see when your project started. Okay. And that's a milestone. So that won't have a predecessor. That's the only thing in the schedule that won't have a predecessor. And the last one's the only thing that won't have a successor. Okay. Everything else needs a predecessor or successor. So let's just build a simple milestone schedule. And this will start after the project starts. This is gonna start after each task. It's mm -hmm. just gonna be a simple waterfall. Okay. I think I said milestone before. It's a simple waterfall. So each task is starting after another. Okay. And then on this milestone, it'll be the last one here. And that'll put successors in everything. Okay. So you don't put the successors in if you're putting the predecessors in. Yes. Now I know that this milestone one rolls up to here. Mm -hmm. So the predecessor to this particular line, the bottom of my schedule, mm -hmm. will be this milestone because I want everything right. to be my little kids crossing the street. Mm -hmm. So I can put 17 here and it okay. puts a six here. So I'm done with that. And what happened to my days here? They're starting to move out a little, right? Oh, that's true, yeah. And then I'm gonna start this set of tasks after I'm done with these up here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start this after six and they're just gonna be waterfalls. Okay. You gotta love HP. <laughs> Eight, and I'm gonna start this task at the same time so I can show you a little different okay. variety. It's going to start at the same time and have different predis or different resources. Okay. And then because these don't have successors, this milestone is going to tie everything up and let me know when I'm done with subtask two. Okay. So I'm going to put nine and ten here, which will add my predecessors. So that was nine comma ten, and it just does it for you. Mm -hmm. okay. Now I've got a question for you. Would there be a different way we could, like, link them? Are you linking them right now? I am. This is the way, the easiest way. You can struggle over here on the Gantt chart. <laughs> Let's make it a little bigger. Remember our time scale from before? Mm -hmm. Let's make it in days. And you can link them here. I find that very difficult to do. And in 03, there used to be that link tasks, like a cl paper clip or something. And Is that any good? Yes, that still shows up here. So does that so, do the same thing? Mm -hmm. So you can link them this way. Pick 11, press your control key and pick 13, and use your link task there. That links them. Okay. Or you can struggle and link them this way. <laughs> okay. But that's awkward so to me. You clicked on the bar and then yeah. you dragged it to the other bar. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have this in starting after. So I'll demonstrate that again. And then here's your milestone for these. Okay. And that'll be 15. And then your milestone here will be 17 or your successor. Okay. So you hooked the milestone 1C to project XYZ complete. I see. Yes. Okay. And then I know that after all of these are done, my project's complete, but since they're all tied together and they mm -hmm. start one after another, mm -hmm. I don't need 17 up here because eight's starting right here. Okay, so everything's linked. Everything has a successor. Mm -hmm. Everything has a predecessor, except for my project start and my project complete. 
Nice. So I've clicked off that on my checklist. Mm. Okay, so now we're gonna go and look at our tasks and add how the duration. Okay. So how many days do you think this task will take? We'll just kind of put arbitrary days in here to just save everyone's time since this is a demo. Mm -hmm. So these days we're putting in, you know, they could be based on a variety of factors, the expert judgment of people working on the project. Actually, these days should have been defined when you do your WBS schedule or your WBS breakdown. Mm -hmm. When you have your team full of, or your room full of people mm -hmm. in your team, mm -hmm. and you have your little post notes and mm -hmm. you make your WBS schedule, mm -hmm. or your WBS breakdown, mm -hmm. everyone should agree to how much time that would take. Okay. And that's where you're gonna work out your predecessors too. Right. So they give you a rough high level idea of, you know, what it would, how long. Yeah. And those, but a lot of times project managers just put the dates in yeah. themselves. And I would, <laughs> wouldn't suggest that, because you're not gonna get team buy-in. You want this to be a team schedule. Right. How much is it really gonna take? Right. And that way, when you go and ask for your budget, mm -hmm. you're more sure of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a swag, and you're not just burning through it, and at the end saying, I don't know where the money is. Sorry. <laughs> this way, you're putting dollars to tasks and resources to dollars and it's all in one nice little package. Gotcha, so really what people are doing here is not giving you, oh, it's gonna take me 200 hours. They're actually just giving you a rough idea of the duration, okay. For okay. each of those tasks on your WBS schedule. Gotcha, cool. Okay, so this is a very small schedule just to get you guys going. Your real schedules are gonna be much more difficult than this and you're gonna have to think a lot through what's gonna be done prior to starting another. It might be in another schedule you mm -hmm. need to link, which sure. isn't, we're not linking external schedules in this <laughs> session. Right. It might be on a contractor waiting for something, and that's when you'd put your deadline date in. But mostly, your WBS and then putting it into a schedule is gonna drive your dates. Now remember, I said don't look at the dates till we're done. We're still not done. Mm -hmm. What have we not added to here? Hmm. Resource names. Okay, and remember when we talked about resources earlier, we on, wanted to always add the resources in what view? Resource sheet view. So I'm gonna make up some resources. I'm gonna just put four in here. So we have four resources, and you'll notice none of them are red. Red mm -hmm. resources means that they're over allocated in the particular project you're looking at. Now in the enterprise view, when you're on a project, you're looking at resources over enterprise, so they almost always turn up red. Just a warning. Mm -hmm. Now here's where you put in your costs for your project. We're gonna go add, a, go ahead and add a material resource. So we're gonna put track, tractor and make it a material resource. So the cost use for that material resource is gonna be $100. And then the hourly rate for these people, I'm just gonna put random. and then that's gonna be what calculates our cost for a project. Okay. All of these people are um, standard uh, people on fixed salaries. Okay. There's no overtime pay. Okay. Okay, so I have my resources. So I go back to my favorite view, my 03 Gantt view, mm -hmm. which has all my pretty colors and my milestones are blue and my critical tasks mm -hmm. are red. So you're gonna teach us all that in the, the advanced yes. class, how to make it look how yes, you want it to. Yes, how we're gonna make these views. Cool. And now I'm getting at the point where I want my split screen because I wanna see more mm -hmm. data. So I'm gonna, there's several ways you can split your screen. You can go over here to um, view and details. 
I showed you guys that earlier. Uh -huh. Or you can go over here, and this is hard to explain to people when you're like, just click on that button right, right. It's this little bar right here, and it'll have a double line on it, and you just pull it up. Oh, okay. That's how I was taught, and that's how I usually do it. But the safest way, if you can't find that little bar, is just go up there to the details. Mm -hmm. Now remember, I like to task detail form because it opens up even more data. So I'm gonna pull that up. So I just right click and go in here and find more, more views. And I want the task, ta task details form. Now I wanna edit this so I don't have to go figure where that's at all the time and put it in the menu so I can show it in the menu. And so oh. when I right click over here now, it's in mm. my menu. Nice. Okay, so I have all my pages open. I'm ready to f put my resources in, but right down here I'm on predecessor and successor. So I have to right click again over in my gray, and I want my resources and my predecessors to show up. So I can put my resources here. I can put my resources here. Or there's another little place which I never use. You can assign the resources using this little box. There's three different ways. Cool. I choose to put my resources here. It's cleaner. You can see if they're fixed units or fixed work. You can just see so much more data using the task detail form. Mm -hmm. So on this particular task, I'm gonna put one person. That's gonna be and I click down on the down arrow and it gives me all of my resources and I can pull from them. I'm gonna put Cindy. And we already told the project that it's gonna take four days. So I'm gonna do okay. She's gonna work 100%. Well, Cindy is working on several projects. So not to overload her, mm -hmm. I'm gonna work her at 50% okay. and do okay. Now we can keep loading all the people that way or we can go back to the resource sheet and change Cindy max work to 50%. And that way she'll automatically load at 50% all the time. All the time. Mm. Now we know that people don't work 100%, 100%, 100% mm -hmm. on a project. So I like to be safe when I do my estimates, okay. put them in here at 80%. That way it gives you some slack. Okay in how it's loading and because people don't work 100% on the projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my Gantt view up on top and I did that by right clicking okay. on that bar mm -hmm. and I'm gonna start loading my resources. So again, Cindy's loaded at 50%. They'll show up over here on your resource names at 50% if they're a percent less than 100. Okay. Or if they're a percent more than 100. People could be working 100% on the projects. Or they could be working 24 hours. It's all dependent on what you've put in the calendar. Gotcha. So this, speaking of which, this project, I didn't start the start date. We're gonna start it today. It automatically puts today's date on a project. Okay. My status date, I'm not statusing it yet. And my calendar, I wanna use my XYZ calendar. Remember we copied it mm -hmm. over to the global so that would be available. Yeah. So all of that's set. Now if I was on an enterprise server, they'd have custom fields here I'd probably need to fill out too. So that's what this is for. Okay, so let's finish with our resources. So I'm gonna load Joe on this one. I'm gonna load John on this one, and I want you to notice as you're loading, because this is something you gotta think about. I can't put Joe on all three of these tasks, <laughs> why? He'll be over allocated. He'll be over allocated, because, oh, wait a minute, I could have. I can't put Joe on these two tasks together. Joe could work all three of these tasks, because they're one after another. You'll notice in your Gantt chart, oh, I see what you mean. they're one after another. So Joe could be working on that. Sequential. All three of them, yes. Okay, so let's go down to this next section. Can we take a little break? My head's heating up a little bit. Sure, too much information. <laughs> okay, we'll be back. <laughs> 